Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, we're going to have our reporters from the border. And the video and the photos they took are being picked up by DrudgeReport.com, Tea Party websites, all of it. It's the illegals getting off buses, being loaded on church vans and being shipped out. That's coming up. Also, hundreds of thousands being taken captive, massive executions in horror. As the Saudi Arabian funded Al-Qaeda forces, Drudge has it from the Daily Mail. It's just unbelievable. Uh, engage in the executions of Christians in mass, in mass graves. This is just incredible. This is just amazing. We're going to cover all that. Coming up in the next segment, Dr. Stan Monteith, what I was saying before we went to break is evil's moving on every front right now. I can see that the hammer's dropping. I mean, A, do you concur with that? Do you feel it in your spirit? And where do you see everything going? I think that we are in real trouble. I think America has turned against God, and I believe God is going to bring his judgment. And less, as I mentioned earlier, we have a massive a revival. I don't see it coming, but my job, your job, a small group of people in alternative radio are having an impact. And I will tell you, the other side is, is worried. In fact, I saw this uh, notation the other day. There was some sort of an article in one of the magazines criticizing these crazy people as a the conspiracy. But it said that there are almost 23% of the population really believes there is a conspiracy. Well, I, I think that's pretty good. And I think we're making progress, Alex. All we can do is keep pushing, but also pointing this is not simply an ideological battle. It's a spiritual battle. And try to get people to begin looking to our Lord for salvation and basically for strength, because that's where our strength is going to come from. And if we're going to turn this thing around, it's going to be with God's help, not simply on our own effort. I'm showing images of the Al-Qaeda troops uh, that have taken over, the ISIS forces, and they are just showing the mass graves, the mass executions. There's even gruesome video of it. I don't know if we're going to show that, but, I mean, this is just wholesale evil. Every Christian they find is killed. Every policeman they find is killed. This is who our government put in and is now funding the destruction of the very same moderates that we're putting compared to these people. This is unspeakable evil that's being committed right now, and it just shows uh, the plan they have for us here as well. They're funding both sides. That's what most people must understand. We are funding the Shias, we're funding the Sunnis, and we should pull out of there completely, and we should demand immediately. In fact, I said me yesterday for the first time, I actually contacted my congressman and both my senators and said, pull out, pull out immediately, and I would suggest that we ask your listeners uh, certainly to uh, certainly send an email uh, immediately to their congressmen and both senators saying pull out. If there was enough of certainly a, a support across America, we could bring pressure on Obama and he would begin to back down. I sure, really sure. Here's my issue, and I want to have you back up soon and talk about it. I was against going there both times because it was a setup. Right. And I know you were as well. The problem is Saudi Arabia and NATO are behind this ISIS takeover. You've got highways for 20 miles full of the Al-Qaeda forces. They could highway of death them and destroy them. But Obama acts like he's just fumbling around doing nothing. Don't we have a responsibility if we topple the government to not no, let Al-Qaeda take over? I think that we. this is a civil war. You just pull everything out, get out of there completely and let them solve it on their own. It's, it's, going to be a, it's going to be a bloodbath no matter what happens, but we should not be back there. No, 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 I agree with you, that, but that was, you know, back in 1990. Don't let them, you know, do this or let them have a civil war. Now, what I'm saying is the globalists are the ones 
This is the same Al-Qaeda group they had attacking Syria. Now they've gone into Iraq. Dr. Stan Monteith, we're all praying for you, brother. Get better. I want to have you back up soon. Godspeed at Radio Liberty. We all owe you a debt. And say hi to your wife and family for you. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks so much, Alex. Bye-bye. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supplies worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 8 a Day, two five three three one three nine. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base. Nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Concerning the Texas border and Greyhound buses that are coming across without the Border Patrol even checking them, disgorging illegal alien teenagers, but also young adults with children who are being loaded on vans and taken to facilities all over the country. I mean, this is the end of law and order, the end of the border. And a lot of libertarians will say, whoopee, that's great. That's not libertarianism. Mexico doesn't reciprocate. You can't go to Mexico and have your baby paid for. You can't go to Mexico and get free in-state tuition. You can't go to Guatemala and get that. You can't go to Nigeria and get that. Folks, I think you should really visit Mexico City. I've been there. I think you should visit Guatemala City. I think you should visit Nigeria. I think you should visit Roatan. I think you should visit Honduras. I think you should see it for yourself. There's 7 billion people want to come in this country. And Obama is saying, if you can get here, you're legal. 
And we have the bombshell video up on Infowars.com. It's gone viral via DrudgeReport.com and a bunch of other sites. Fox News last week and this week has been picking up our videos that we get at the immigration facilities and military bases that no one else is getting other than Breitbart. They're getting stuff in Houston. We got incredible video in San Antonio, now video down in Brownsville and other areas. They're in McCallum. A reporter is going to be there for a couple days, Jakari Jackson and others. And it is showing teenagers loaded off buses at the border, not being searched. And the Border Patrol is on record saying they've been ordered to stand down. This is what's happening in America. This is what's happening at the Greyhound bus terminals. This is the end of the country as we know it. And again, if these were skilled workers from Mexico who were going to come up here and demand good wages and who we could get to vote for the Second Amendment, it actually wouldn't be bad for our economy. This is totally unskilled. This is people that are going to be a total draw on the system. And that's what it's designed to do under Cloward and Piven, the Democratic Party plan to bankrupt the social services and bring in total control to bankrupt the free market. And it is just incredible to see the buses arriving from all over Mexico for the illegals to just be legalized in mass and then to politically come in and be organized into anti-American brigades, which is what the Democrats are doing. I mean, they're allowed to call Mecha and La Raza well, La Raza means the race, and the motto is for those inside the race, everything. For those outside the race, nothing. It's so over the top. And it's just going to get worse. Like, it's racist if you don't have 100% taxes on you. It's racist if you don't house illegals in your house. Why, well, they're people too. But then when they take your house because you didn't pay the property taxes, nobody's going to cry for you. When the cops write you five tickets, even though you can't pay your, for your kids' lunches, it uh, doesn't matter. Your car's out of inspection. Your, your tires aren't good. Uh, you're, you were, uh, you know, your license plate's out here. I'm going to write you four or five tickets. But, sir, I'm bankrupt. Tell it to the judge, lady. Bankrupt America, bottom line. This is a revolution against this country. I want to hear from listeners out there on this subject ahead of our reporters who are going to be doing a live shot anywhere they go. There's just bus terminals and vans, they were telling us. Any town you go to, just arriving, just illegals, just everywhere, massing and being bussed all over the country. It is like a D-Day military invasion. A lot in Fasora. And you see that on the billboards for Mexican radio stations. La Infosora. Money is nine, La Infosora. And then you can look at the billboards called La Reconquista. And, and again, it's organized by government. Remember, uh, who's the, he's a white guy. He's the biggest owner of Spanish TV stations in the country. Came out a few years ago, got picked up by NBC. Drudge picked it up. I remember showing it where they did billboards saying Los Angeles and crossing it out. Los Angeles, USA, and saying Mexico. So, so playing into that as a sense of national pride, but you can't serve peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at the school cafeteria because that's racist. Or you can't dress up like a Native American for Halloween because that's racist. And you can't say the word bossy because it's anti-feminist. Like everything's racist or, or, or anti-woman. Just total political correctness, everyone paralyzed, and then the illegals can say, down with the U.S., you know, this is Mexico. And I have footage of the immigration demonstrations here in Austin with folks hoisting their kids up going, Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. It's in my film, Battle for the Republic. And it'd be one thing if Switzerland bordered us, and let's say the Swiss had brown skin, and they were like invading with billions of dollars and invading with Second Amendment and invading with, you know, prosperity. I'd be like, man, I mean, let me, let me tell you something. Mexico's a beautiful country. If Mexico was like Switzerland, I mean, it was all brown people, but it was free and it was safe at night. You could have guns. I would move there 
okay? I might have moved there when I was 20 and married a senorita. But let me tell you something, folks. It isn't with the people, the way they look, I don't like. It's that it's a failed collapse.